Welcome back to Dunekian, George Dunekian and Theo Zagrafos joining us. And uh, Theo is our third guest in the opening program uh, we're putting together for uh, Facebook. And importantly, in this instance, Theo is uh, coming along as a contributor to talk politics, but also he's here in his official uh, capacity as a Monash councillor. You know, local government is important. They've got uh, some in, uh, amazing things that they need to attend to. And of course, when they do the job uh, poorly, we all complain. When they do it well, nobody says a thing. So with that in mind, welcome to the show, Theo. Hello, George. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. My important uh, responsibility is to get as much out of you as we possibly can without jarring and without taking you into areas that you're not comfortable with. Uh, so let's come back and talk about Australian politics, which has been very much in the news this week. Okay? We've seen uh, at federal level uh, all manner of uh, hue and cry about Christopher Pine, mm. uh, who is, I suppose, the Minister for Business or doing business in the federal government. And he's a major player in South Australian politics, but he's also been a pretty strong character in the federal parliament. And he's, he, he stepped out of turn, he spoke, I suppose, out of turn, and it's come back to haunt him. Uh, what's been the feedback from your end, from your perspective? Well, I think um, it shows that in this day and age, um, politicians need to be mindful of um, what they say in any setting, whether it's off the record or in a private uh, event, uh, we saw that a few weeks ago in Canberra where the Prime Minister made some remarks that were reported in the media by Laurie Oakes. Um, Laurie Oakes, by the way, chose not to follow uh, everybody else. Uh, was it a case of Laurie being Laurie and standing outside and wanting to show the world that there are no rules, they're just my rules? Well, look, I don't know Laurie Oakes, but I could definitely say that um, there's more to why it was leaked um, than what's been reported. And uh, I think in this day and age, the Prime Minister and other members of Parliament need to always assume that whatever they say will be reported. Um, on that particular occasion, I don't think it did any harm to the Prime Minister. It made him look um, more human than the average politician. And um, I think that's probably a good thing for Australian politics. I totally agree there, but it did create some uh, disharmony uh, within certain factions of the Liberal Party who feel that... Uh, uh, the comments showed that uh, maybe it was the, 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 the subject that, that we're talking about, and that is um, uh, a marriage equality, is a lot closer to actually happening than they imagined it would be, a plebiscite or no. Well, it's certainly an issue that has um, a variety of views within the Liberal Party, both in Canberra and across the country amongst okay. our membership. Um, and the government had a policy at, before the last election um, and I think that uh, they should keep to that policy before the next election. If they want to change their policy, um, they should take it to an election on this such an issue. And their policy was defeated in the parliament in terms of having a plebiscite. Um, I think that's the, res the responsible way to go about it. Now, you have your ear on uh, much that's being said in your local constituency. Mm. Uh, what do Monash um, uh, constituents uh, saying about equal uh, <coughs> uh, marriage, equality in marriage? Do they want to see it? Do they want to change the, the standard that has basically been uh, in effect since Federation, since 1905? I can't give you a, a definitive answer because I haven't asked every single resident in my community, but the people that have spoken to me, um, I would say that it's not their number one concern. Yep. They want their government to deliver a budget surplus. They want their governments to cut down on waste. Um, it's probably not in their top five issues, if I could people that have spoken to me. Having said that... But the drivers, the people who are actually pushing this, the lobbyists, so to speak, those, those, those uh, uh, families that really want some, uh, s some sense of uh, not continuity, but uh, being made to feel like they're mm. as, as good and as yeah. capable, and I suppose they don't want to be seen as second-class citizens. No, of course so not. So they're saying, if, if we have, want to have a partner, mm -hmm. uh, my, our feeling should be that they should be acknowledged in, in a legal way, yes. just like everyone else is acknowledged. And they have every right to seek that acknowledgement. I've got nothing against their quest and their campaign that has been going on for decades in this mm. country. Um, it's about where we fit it in, in terms of um, the legislative requirements of the parliament, the priorities of the government of the day, whether it's this government or any future government. 
or even if you go back to the Gillard government where there was a private members' bills voted mm. on in the, in the federal parliament. It's certainly not something that is raised with me as a local councillor in any way Often of, of any great mass. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's, uh, so uh, uh, let's, let's just take a moment and a pause. And on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, how has the week run for the Prime Minister? Um, I would say that um, it hasn't been the best week, unfortunately, due to some of the reporting around divisions within the party. Um, and, of course, the former Prime Minister, Christopher Pine, um, reporting as well didn't help the government. Christopher Pine then needed to apologise. Yeah. Um, but you're alluding never... to Tony Abbott, uh, yeah. distracting people in the... In the uh, uh, in, the, in the Parliament and in Canberra uh, and insisting that he has a voice as a former Prime Minister, he has a voice and he wants to make it a very loud one. Yeah, and I think he's entitled to, um, to speak up from time to time on issues that he believes are important. He is a former Liberal Party leader and, as you said, a Prime Minister. That carries enormous weight, but it's also a matter of respect. Having said that, um, it's the government's role to lead and the Prime Minister's role is to lead and he doesn't need to be distracted if he remains focused on the job at hand. And that goes the same for ministers and members of the, of the government, members of parliament. Um, so I think that uh, if the government continues to stay focused, um, regardless of any potential division, they will be able to get runs on the board. Okay. Uh, let's, speaking of runs on the board and uh, things that are happening and uh, evolving as we, uh, as we uh, live, um, I noticed the Prime Minister did something revolutionary today, mm. yeah? something innovative, uh, and he loves being uh, he spoken of as the innovative king of uh, uh, Prime Minister. Yep. So he's done something that we're doing, in a, in a manner of speaking. We're creating a program, we're putting it on Facebook. We believe it's a new platform, mm. uh, and we think it is uh, the way of the future. In fact, there are a great many people within the organisation of Facebook who want to spend billions of dollars to make um, Facebook the new TV platform. Mm. So what did the Prime Minister do today? Well, George, he visited the Facebook headquarters in Sydney, yep. the Australian headquarters. And would, uh, he have, would he have visited the headquarters if it was in Melbourne? Of course, he loves okay, Melbourne. Right. He, he gave $1.2 billion to And Melbourne. he loves trams. He loves trams and he loves uh, my community of Chisholm very much. He, he visited there this week as well with uh, Julia Banks, who's a great member of parliament. But he was at, in Sydney today and um, he was interviewed uh, live on Facebook and of course when you do that, Facebook users can be engaged by commenting and liking and as we hope will be happening at, at the moment. That's right. But, um, Did you but get a sense of how many people uh, locked in I think there was about a thousand, a thousand at that particular time but since then there would have been multiple thousands more. Um, sharing that sharing and, and watching it and, yeah. and time and time yeah. again. But you mentioned Facebook and, and there was an article this week that said that they're creating their own content in the same way that Net Netflix has been in the previous few yes. years. So Facebook itself will now um, be producing sh the television shows, uh, dramas, movies and broadcasting that on their platform. So that's exactly where the future is. Um, we mentioned Tony Abbott, Peter Credlin, who's a, 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 a journal these days in The Australian, wrote an article mm. about um, politicians using this media to um, to promote their agendas and the issues that they're talking about. This is exactly what media is these days. It's all um, digital. Mm -hmm. um, all the free-to-air networks in Australia, the ones that you served on for many decades, they're all creating content for that reason. And the users, the punters out there, um, they're using it even more so than what they're watching Australian free-to-air television. There are more Facebook users daily that watch free-to-air television. Well, that's there are a number of reasons for that. One, you can take it everywhere you it's, go. That's right. Okay. Um, you can watch it whenever you want. Mm. So when I, was, when I first got into television, uh, those television networks were monopolies. Yep. If you wanted any information, you had to wait mm. 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, right. 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you know, whatever. And you created habits. Mm. Now, all those habits have gone by the by. Mm. All those technologies now are seeing new disruptors. And I notice that one of these new disruptors is Facebook. But it's doing it in, a, in an extraordinarily uh, exciting way, mm. as far as we're concerned, because mm. we're, we're joining. We're, we're jumping on board and, and creating our own content as we speak. But I think the, the fascinating thing is 
is the better you do it and the more engaging you mm. make it, uh, hopefully the audience will lock in, yep. uh, will, as they say, engage, and the, the word will be spread. It's a bit like what we used to say in the past, uh, word of mouth, good mm. word of mouth is important, bad word of mouth is also important because it, it'll hurt you. Here, it's word of mouth, mm. amplified, and not necessarily in real time, but That's global. Right. Absolutely. Which is an extraordinary tool if you do it well. That's exactly right, George. And the Australian community is speaking um, with their clicks. I mean, <laughs> the numbers don't lie, as we said. There are so many people uh, using social media for all facets of their life. We spoke about um, the government. They, they've cancelled licence fees this week, the federal government for uh, free-to-air networks. Now, you're talking because big millions of dollars there. Those licence fees, yeah. we're talking, I think, for 10 Mm -hmm. Recently, the number was quoted at twenty-three million dollars. Yeah. Now, yeah. if you don't have to, if you don't have those onerous mm. uh, license fees to carry mm. or to pay, mm. then you can do much more with you the can, money that you, you can have. You can create a new show. But what it shows is just like the taxi industry here in, in Victoria, um, the new market isn't regulated in the same way that the traditional market has been, and therefore um, there is that 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 those funds that are now being freed up. And so it's, there's no limit now to what can be achieved, whether it's media or taxis or Uber or whatever else it is. Now you touched on something mm. um, that alerted me to ask you another question. And we, let's bring this now to state politics. Um, Uber mm. uh, was uh, made legal in Victoria. The Andrews government made it uh, a legal uh, way to access a ride. Um, and the thing that stunned me is that uh, this comes after years and years and years of the taxi industry being uh, uh, weighed down with mm. onerous uh, licensing fees. Yep. So it's all well and good to talk about disruption, but what do you say to all the taxi uh, license holders and mm. plate holders mm. who've paid not thousands, but in, in many cases, millions of dollars, assuming again, we hear that term, assuming that this will be their nest egg, this will be their hedge against inflation, this will be their mm. hedge against uh, any rises in, in super. And being told now that those licences are almost worthless. Well, they're not quite worthless, <coughs> but when you consider what they were paid mm. or paid out, mm. they are worthless. And, and Is that fair? It, it, well, it's not fair in a sense what's happened to them. Um, but there's two things to say here. First of all, they were promised... Um, various concessions and uh, compensation by the current state, Andrew's government. But they Victoria, haven't accepted them. And that hasn't been delivered. Uh -huh. So they're angry first because uh, of the broken promise. Okay. And of course you can understand that. They were initially angry at the previous Bailey government, but at least he said what he was going to do and did it, as opposed to Daniel Andrews that said, well, I'm, I will do this, but then he hasn't done it to give them the compensation that they're after. And of course, secondary to that, they're angry at the way that the market has been given a head start in, in their, from their perspective by the government to say that, well, why aren't you regulating Uber, for example, ride sharing? Is it a case now of the ATO, the Australian Tax Office, <coughs> coming in and being the they, sort of um, uh, uh, the ATO sheriff? doesn't miss a tax dollar. Uh, they're onto it absolutely. They've been onto it now for three or four years. So could it, this be, there was a federal court ruling. So could this be a bit of a self-regulator in some respects? bring back the power of Uber by saying to all and sundry, all right, if you're going to be a, an Uber player, understand yep. that the tax office wants to speak to you on a regular basis. Absolutely. The tax office will be looking at every single subcontractor, that those are the drivers, yep. to say, um, are you paying GST quarterly? Are you declaring this as income in your tax return? And if not, uh, we'll come after you. And, and also, the Uber, the company, the entity that actually is an international entity, is now obligated for the first time to give over to the ATO every single driver, their details, their tax return so number, their tax file number. So well, that lifts, uh, lifts the, scale, the stakes uh, appreciably and changes absolutely. some of the... Uh, Uber's already had to change their model. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of changing, uh, let's change the subject for a matter. We've got uh, 500 plus days to the next state election. Yep, in Victoria. Um, in, in Victoria. Uh, how is Matthew Guy tracking as yep. the opposition leader? And how is the incumbent looking with uh, 500 plus days still to go? 
Well, it depends on how you classify tracking. If you go by the published polls, the coalition is, um, is well placed um, in terms of in an election winning position. Yep. Um, the incumbent always has the advantage of incumbency. So um, I don't think anyone in the coalition is underestimating Daniel Andrews and his team. Um, I think in Victoria, every election is competitive. Mm -hmm. Even the ones where Liberals got decimated in 2002, it was competitive up to the last 10 days until we had some issues in our own party and um, it, was, it was a landslide to Steve Brax. So I think my, my feeling on it is, is that um, there are at least half a dozen seats that I can see changing, but the coalition needs at least seven to form government in its own right. I think a hung parliament um, is a possibility. Having said that, George, we're 18 months out, so it's an eternity until the next election. 540 and days. Plenty of opportunities for a banana yeah. skin to uh, slip by and uh, unsettle both <coughs> players, both sets of players. We don't know what One Nation, One Nation will do, for example. Will they contest the Victorian state election? Um, if they do, then that will have ramifications. Um, their preferences seem to go 50-50 at the federal level, but where they will go in some rural seats in Victoria, we don't know. Um, I think that Daniel Andrews many times looks as though he wants to lose the election. Um, I think Matthew Guy um, has kept a very united parliamentary team. Which is not easy to do in opposition, It's is it? almost impossible to do. If you go back to since 1950s in Victoria, whether it's been the Labor, Democratic Labor Party in the 50s and their split, whether it was Jeff Kennett, who I've got a lot of time for and Correct. respect for, but even he was challenged five times when he was opposition leader. Matthew Guy has been very good at um, uh, giving the sense of uh, hard work ethic and that, yes, he is um, the leader, but he's happy to consult with and his team. And, and all singing and, and getting, um, getting everyone to sing off the same hymn sheet. Well, they're doing very, very good work. Okay. The Shadow Ministry, uh, people like David Hodgett, David Davis, and many others, Georgie Crozier, fantastic. And yep. That's paying uh, dividends. dividends. As well, let's leave it there. Uh, you'll come back as often as we need you. Thank you. And more yeah, importantly, uh, we'll get as we get closer to both the state election and, and we'll talk it, uh, about federal matters as well, uh, we'll, get, we'll get more in depth about uh, what are the sorts of drivers, what are the sorts of things that Australians, both at local government level, at state government level and at federal level, are thinking each and every week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, George. That's Theo Zagrafos on Dunekian. When we come back, we'll uh, let you know what's happening in our next episode of Dunekian on Facebook.